Hey guys, uh, Mark Wade's lawyer, Mark Zaid. No, that's not a joke. That's actually his name. Mark Wade hired a lawyer named Mark Zaid. I've made a few videos about him before, uh, but he's totally gone insane. <laughs> I mean, he, he's always been that way. And I actually looked through some of his old tweets uh, today. I mean, not too in-depth, but I was just curious if he has ever been to Charlottesville. Uh, really, essentially what I want to make this video about is is all of the best evidence that your boy Zach, uh, Richard C. Meyer, is a white supremacist. Because that's the claim that's going out. And so I want to look and see what their best evidence is. And you can decide what you think. Uh, I think that there is absolutely no case. This is ridiculous. Uh, they're just hoping that passers-by will see what they've said, and they're just going to go with it. So I tweeted this out earlier today because I found that Mark Zaid has been to Ground Zero. Now, I'm going to ignore the fact, you know, what he was there for. I'm going to ignore the date even. <laughs> you know, it, none of that really matters. Those are details. Uh, he was actually saying never forget 9-11. But it, you know, I'm going to do the same tactic. He's been to ground zero. And so I literally copied and pasted his same tweet, different context. Uh, it says, yep, just coincidence. He was at ground zero when, uh, never mind, there are fine people on both sides. Yep, this is Mark Wade. And if you think that that logic is entirely stupid, uh, and it sounds ridiculous that I would insinuate that Mark Zaid had anything to do whatsoever with the 9-11 terrorist attacks, then you would be right. Uh, that kind of craziness is crazy in this context, and it's crazy in another context. So I literally copied and pasted what Mark S. Zaid Esquire said himself, except I changed Charlottesville to uh, Ground Zero, and other than that, it's exactly the same. So he's insinuating here, and look at that ratio, by the way, 98 <laughs> comments to six. If if you've never been on Twitter, this is what you call an epic ratio when you have so few people that are liking your tweet and so many that have uh, an awful lot to say about it that you look ridiculous. Uh, so he has really been making it a point to make a fool of himself. Um, I used to think about this a little bit and, you know, maybe there's some strategy to it or he thinks there's some strategy to it or he's using the the idea that there could be strategy, uh, you know, involved with trolling people on Twitter as some kind of justification to, uh, you know, more intelligent people or people that he knows so that he can, you know, justify acting like an idiot. But the more I think about this and the more I look into it, uh, no sane professional lawyer does this kind of thing this is this is truly unique to him and he doesn't just do it with his clients this is just how he acts on twitter and he's acted this way for years i actually looked to see what he had to say when the whole charlottesville if you're not familiar uh there was a, a kkk rally an actual kkk rally in charlottesville and uh there was antifa protesters there and some dude ran over, ran right into a crowd of people with his car at a high rate of speed, and he actually killed somebody. Now, to insinuate that uh, your boy Zach, to insinuate that he had anything to do with that, that's that's terrible. I'm I'm no lawyer, and I hate that I have to always say that. But that sounds uh, uh, not slanderous, right? You, the, you have to s speak slander. So this that sounds, I can't even think of the word. You, it's, you get my idea. The slanderous version uh, when you type it, which is liable. There we go. Got it. <laughs> liable. This sounds libelous. Um, and if it sounds that way, that's because, I mean, this is definitely, it, it's just disgusting. I don't, legal, legal issues aside, politics aside, this is disgusting. And I actually saw a lot of people on his own side saying, Hey man, I don't like diversity in comics, never have, but you're being an absolute idiot. Now, the reason this is important is because this is actually one of the main defenses that Mark Zaid is employing. And that is to say that, uh, that all of the accusations of white supremacy are justified and that, uh, that this somehow makes sense and that's not liable uh, with malicious intent. Crazy thing is, if Mark Zaid does it, he suddenly thinks that 
it's okay if Mark Wade does it. None of this really makes sense. I don't see how this is a defense and I don't see how this is helping his client's case whatsoever. This is just craziness. I just feel like at this point, it's just the death throws. They know they're going down. So they're just trying to get in as many pot shots as they possibly can. Another thing is I do think that Mark Zaid, he knows that if he posts outrageous stuff like this, then, you know, Richard C. Meyer, he's going to see this on Twitter, though he might not be on Twitter. He's on Twitter. I mean, you know, he sees, I, I watched the videos. We know you're on Twitter and that's cool. You might as well just open up your account again. So, uh, you know, at least we can, we can, uh, dunk on someone like this together. No, another thing here. I don't know if this is super professional of me to be commenting uh, on Twitter here. I've been trying to be, you know, a professional comic creator, but at the same time, it's like, you got to stand up to stuff like this. This is Honestly, this is the reason why I got into all of this, why I started the YouTube channel. And so I do, I do. I don't know, it's, I, I'm kind of torn, but I do feel an obligation uh, to stand up to this kind of stuff. So hence, you know, we're going to make a video for it. And that way, when somebody Googles, is Richard C. Meyer a white supremacist, this is what they're going to get. Okay, so we, before we get into their best evidence, I just want to show you real quick my comic book downcast. Yes, I write comic books and th this is currently on Indiegogo. We're at 18,940 with 526 backers. This is huge. It's about blue collar teens that use the power of gravity to fight against a corrupt city for their father's life. It's a whole lot of fun. We're already way overfunded. Uh, but if you want to get in, we're starting to run out of time. So I would uh, follow it. It's in the link in the description below and make sure to back it. All right. Best evidence. I looked at a few places and let's be honest, what was motivating Mark Wade to say that Richard Meyer is a white supremacist? It had more to do with the fact that that's what he said on Twitter. And so he just sort of perpetuated this nonsense over and over and over again. And this is on Mark Wade's website. He's the kind of guy that is so upset about it that on his own professional website for his own personal brand, He's got a big link right on the home page to it that goes to his GoFundMe. Uh, first, there's this web page that has a description of, I guess, his plight and then why why uh, Richard C. Meyer diversity in comics at the time. Your boy, Zach, with Luna, Comics Matter, whatever, you know, whatever you're going to call my... <laughs> I, I have a feeling that you're watching this, uh, Zach. I'm going through this um, and, uh, you know, I think you're cool. I, I'm defending you, but... Uh, you know, if you think my name, my, uh, my name, sweet cast is a little weird. I got to say you, you do change your name a lot. So, uh, yeah, that aside though, I do actually respect you quite a bit. Here are some of the worst things that he said. Okay. Or that you said, these are some of the worst things that you've said. And they're so bad that he included them right here on his personal, uh, web page so that he could convince people to donate money to him to defeat the evil. Uh, so I'm going to look through these. I've looked through them before. I have to say, um, you know, some of them are not nice. We'll, we'll go through them one by one here. The DC Rider Workshop had only eight people in it. One was trans, another was not binary. This isn't business, which hires on merit. This is a modern day carnival. See the bearded lady, see the dog boy, WTF. Now, um, I would word things differently but at the same time I, I i i mean let's be honest he's got a point if you're weaponizing people's uh you know sexual orientation or gender you know all that kind of stuff if you're weaponizing that is it really that you're trying to help people or is it really that you're trying to use them as some kind of token uh to show how great of a you know, person you are or organization you are. I think this is a legitimate uh, criticism. It, it absolutely is. And if that offends you again, I'm sure it could be said differently, but if, even if I, if I said this in the softest way that I possibly could, the offense would be taken just as hard it, because it, I think it has more to do with the actual message and that nerve that's being hit than it does with how it's being said, though, you know, I would probably say it a little different myself. All right, next one here. 
This is literally a picture of the end of Marvel, a spineless leader who would rather tweet about food than take charge, a woman with no comic book experience hired for her plumbing, a minstrel show diva, and two men who have talent but, uh, but put politics over entertainment. I'm not sure who the minstrel show diva is. I know, like, if you say minstrel show, <laughs> you've triggered a whole lot of people. Um, yeah, I'm not sure who he's referring to. I know who he's talking. This is a CB who he's talking about that's always talking about food rather than taking charge. Again, is that a legitimate? Is this offensive? Um, I mean, that first part, you can't. It's talking about a white man. So obviously that doesn't matter. Um, I hired for their plumbing. Um, again, I, I would say this differently. If I said the same thing, again, I think he absolutely has a point. It has more to do with with the delivery uh, from my perspective. However, if this was delivered differently, if, if, but it still maintained the same message, the offense is not going to be any lighter. It's going to be just, just as much butt hurt, uh, no matter how that is said. Okay, it continues. They hired a race hustler because of their white guilt. People bought the book for the art and character, not coats. Um, question is though, did they hire a race hustler? Is this is that not true? Is that racist to point out race hustling? Uh, I I don't think so. I mean, otherwise, how how could actual race hustling? I, I don't know exactly. You know the instance or what set this off. I uh, obviously he's talking about coats, but. But would pointing out race hustling make one a white supremacist? Really? Uh, that that seems ridiculous because then you can you live in a world where you can call anybody a white supremacist. You can actually race hustle without any consequences because no one's allowed to call you out. Uh, so again, I I don't know is is this good enough evidence that he is a white supremacist? I don't think so. Okay, here's here's another one. This is probably. Uh, possibly, I can't remember all of them. Yeah, this is possibly the worst one, depending on who you are. He says, I only call so-and-so a man in a wig, and that was at, only after seeing several close-ups in which so-and-so wasn't even using moisturizer. So-and-so seems to be a trans trender, trans trender, not an actual person. I don't know why he clipped this in two separate. That doesn't make sense to me. That's irritating. Same tweet. Uh, but there is, you know, the rest here, I guess, uh, calling somebody not a person. I, I don't like that. Not an actual, oh, not an actual trans person. I mean, I don't honestly, like I, I this is not something I would want to get into, uh, the weeds trying to figure out <laughs> who's, I mean, what, what is trans and what doesn't count as like, th that seems a bit much, uh, calling someone a man in a wig does that make you a white supremacist? This has nothing to do with race. It has, uh, you know, everything to do with um, trans, but does that's not the defense. The defense is that he is a white supremacist. That's what's been going on. So again, the question is, is this evidence that he's a white supremacist? Uh, is it illegal to call somebody a man in a wig? It might be on Twitter. Uh, well, no, it is on Twitter. But is it actually illegal? Is that justification for act an actual crime, which is tortious interference with a contract? I don't think so. All right. So some of my closing thoughts here. I'll be the first to admit that if you have a YouTube channel, there is a massive incentive to uh, sort of make things bigger than they are, to... to uh, you know, be really loud and confrontational and things like that because you're rewarded for that kind of content. People want to see it. You know, it, it's exciting. It's interesting. There's conflict. People are interested in watching that kind of thing. So I totally get uh, why, why you'll find quotes from him like that. And probably more so if you look through his videos as well. Um, the last point is though, I do think that his, um, his approach has changed. Um, I, I bet you could look back at tweets that I have, have tweeted out, um, including, you know, kind of making fr fun of Mark Zaid here by, you know, just poking fun at him. You could probably find stuff. You could probably find stuff in any of my videos that I'd look back at and maybe cringe and say, ah, man, I should have said things differently. I will bet you that you could go back in anybody's history and find things that they should have said differently. But how it is said 
and the message behind it, the criticism behind it. Um, I really feel like the criticism behind it, that's the problem. That's, that's where this conflict has all sprung from. So is Richard C. Meyer a white supremacist? I've reviewed all the evidence. Either it was that he happened to be in Charlottesville at the same time. You know, he wasn't, you know, forget the fact that he wasn't there with the KKK. He was actually with the protesters. He wanted to hand out a a comic book to one of the KKK members of, you know, the Black Panther. So I, one could say, I haven't heard what he said exactly about it, but one could say that he was there to protest or is it these terrible, awful things that he said on Twitter, which I'll admit I would not have said, but I actually do agree with the crux of the criticism. I think that, you know, it's okay to criticize. And if you can't talk about these politically incorrect issues, if you can't challenge them, then what are we left with? So let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd be really interested uh, to hear if you think he's a white supremacist or not. I have a feeling that uh, there, in reality, there are very few people that are even buying this garbage. Leave a like, subscribe, and don't forget to back Downcast because this book is awesome and uh, it's not approved by Mark Wade or his lawyer. So thank you very much and I'll see you next time.